In this video, I'd like to talk about solid edge patterning. Patterning is probably one of the areas of solid edge that is most unlike solid works. Some of it will look very familiar, and some of it will be a little bit tricky. The pattern tools can be found on the Home tab, in the Pattern group, and there are four types of patterns. One is simply called Pattern, one is Pattern Along Curve, another is Pattern by Table, and the final one is Duplicate. Solid Edge also has standard mirroring functionality, which will look familiar to SolidWorks users. So we'll concentrate our efforts here on the first three functions of the Pattern tool. Pattern starts out looking rather easy. The command bar step type interface wants you to select a feature, and we'll just select this hole to begin with. Click on Accept, and then it wants us to create a sketch. So we click on a plane in Solid Edge fashion, and Solid Edge kicks us into the Sketch tool. Your instinct here might be to go for one of the sketch tools that you're familiar with, but you'd be wrong. What you need to do is to stick to the tools that Solid Edge is providing for patterns, and that includes a rectangular pattern, and a circular pattern. These tools work like sketches, but just be clear that they are not your regular sketch functions. So if I want to create a rectangular pattern, I'll just use the default tool and click and drag out the rectangle that I want to create. If you're looking to create what in SolidWorks is called a linear pattern, then you'll want to change one of these numbers to 1. In this case, I want to do a 3x5 pattern, and so that's showing up with blue dots. You can use a stagger option, which comes with either row or column offsets. I'll set this back to none. If the reference point is not selected, you should select it, and it's shown here with the X. You can suppress occurrences by clicking on the blue dots. It doesn't show a way to get back to that, but if you hit the right mouse button, it will send you back to the interface. For the pattern itself, you have three options, Fit, Fill, and Fixed. Fixed, you just specify spacing and numbers. Fit will fit the number of occurrences, as Solid Edge calls them, into the sketch you have drawn. You can specify an overall size and even rotate the pattern. When you've got what you need, click on the green check mark. Remember, these two occurrences were suppressed. If I wanted to add this small keyway to the pattern, I just click on the pattern, select the Edit Definition, click on Select Step, and then pick a face of the cutout, right-click to Accept, and Finish. If you want to get back to the part of the interface that allows you to change the pattern, then again select the pattern, Click on Edit Definition, and this time click on the sketch, and that will put you back in this part of the interface. Some of the options are no longer available. Now let's look at the curve-driven pattern. I'll sketch on the back for this, and I'll just start by sketching a spline from the center of the original hole. Create a curve-driven or a long curve type pattern. Select the hole feature accept the selection, select the curve to pattern along, accept that selection, click on an anchor point, which would be the very end of the curve, accept that selection, and then establish is, is this a fill, fit, fixed, or chord length type pattern. Input the spacing and or count of occurrences. Next, preview, and finish. Pattern by Table is also very powerful. We can start by selecting the hole and the little keyway to Pattern, and I'll say Accept. Select the coordinate system, and I'm going to select the default coordinate system. Solid Edge gives you the option to browse for an Excel file, and you can link to that. Solid Edge is going to require us to use Excel to build the instance table. It knows where the reference feature is. 
but we need to tell it where each of the additional features is going to be, and that includes an X position, a Y position, and a rotation in degrees. The X and Y are relative to the part coordinate system or whatever reference point you have established. Once you get all of the data entered in, save it and then browse to that location, make sure it is linked, and Solid Edge will bring it all in. You can see it has created these instances right here. I've colored the instances from the other patterns to be able to distinguish features from one pattern from features from another. So you can see how these features have each rotated slightly according to the Excel file. Between these three types of features, the pattern, a long curve, and pattern by table, Solid Edge has plenty of power when it comes to patterning. Just remember to use the dedicated sketch tool for rectangular and circular patterns, and if you want to make a linear pattern, make a rectangular pattern with an X or Y value of 1. Thanks for watching.